All right. Welcome to this special episode of Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt. Every week, Doro and I dive into the latest on alien disclosure, our cosmic role, meditation, our experiences with it, its connection to the alien phenomenon, the, the ongoing struggle for disclosure, living happy lives and building a better world. Today marks our first interview. We're excited to have an extraordinary guest, Yemi Janay from the Farsight Institute, organization that specializes in advanced remote viewing research. Remote viewing is a technique of acquiring knowledge known to be studied by the US government as well as at Stanford University. It involves using extrasensory perception to gather information about distant or unseen targets. The Farsight Institute's work available on YouTube and farsightprime.com includes fascinating projects on topics like aliens, UFOs, government knowledge about extraterrestrials, historical events like JFK's assassination, 9-11, the death of Jeffrey Epstein, religious figures like Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, um, ancient sites like the pyramids of Giza and Pumapunku and much more. Yemi Janay is a prominent member of the team at Farsight and is regarded as one of the most skilled and gifted remote viewers alive today. We're thrilled to learn from Yemi today and explore these intriguing topics together. Welcome, Yemi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I could have listed so many topics because there are so many projects that our site has covered. I have only myself scratched the surface of uh, of listening to them because sometimes you have to watch a project and just sort of like digest it for a few days. I have to digest it doing it. So I get it. And a lot of the times it takes me about 30 days to figure out what I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how did you how did you get involved with remote viewing? What's what's the story there? That is actually quite a funny story. I enjoy telling it because I, I think it's hilarious. Um, I used to be a figure drawing model. Um, and so I used to work in model and host at Apache Cafe, the original Apache Cafe out here in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, Dr. Brown used to be an artist out there. So he used to draw me. And for about two or three years, he just kind of, we talked. I looked forward to seeing him out of everyone there. He was one of the people I like looked for. I never knew his name. And um, one day he just kind of like walked up to me. He hadn't been there for a while. I guess he was what, working on Farsight stuff, but he hadn't been there for a while. And so he came and I'm like, where'd you been? And he asked me a question and he was like, I want you to watch a video for me and then tell me, um, tell me how you feel about it and if you want to do it. And I'm like, okay. And I had no idea what it was. He wouldn't tell me anything. And um, I started watching a video and I was bored to death. <laughs> I was super bored and I kept falling asleep because I didn't know what I was watching. I knew nothing about remote viewing. To, like you could ask me what remote viewing was and I would be like seeing something remotely. I don't know, like I would not have known. And um, anything, I never heard of it a day in my life. And so it took about two months for me to finish this video. And it was the Pyramids of Giza with uh, Dick and Daz in it. So every time he would see me, he goes, did you watch the video? I'm like, I keep falling asleep. I don't know why. I said, I think it's because I don't know what I'm watching. And I, he was like, okay, well, take your time. Just watch it when you can and let me know how you feel about it. And then, um, And then I go back to watch it again. He goes, did you watch it? I'm like, I fell asleep again. I said, I'm going to get through this. I would always rewind it back to where I remember leaving off. And then one day I saw things linking up and I was like, wait a minute. So I rewound the whole video. My mom came to visit. We made popcorn and like grilled almond butter sandwiches. And we sat and had like a random party to watch the video so we could stay awake. And we both fell asleep on it. <laughs> So the very next day, we started in the daytime instead of trying to watch it at night. And we were determined to finish the video. And I was intrigued. I'm like, I don't know what I just watched, but there are people floating. And these guys are in two different parts of the world. And they're talking about the same exact thing. And I need to know what this is about. 
So I finally, two months later, went to Dr. Brown and I said, okay, I watched the video. Uh, what do you want? And he goes, I want you to help me change the world. <laughs> and I'm like, this old dude is crazy. What are you talking about? And he was like, yes, I need you to help me change the world. I can't make a difference in the world doing the same thing. And I can't teach these guys how to look good on camera. You already look good on camera. I can teach you how to remote view. <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, and what does every really cool sci-fi movie have in it? And I was like, I don't know, aliens fighting? He goes, yes, but a really hot black chick. And I lost it. And I was like, okay, you just, you sold me. <laughs> you sold me. And so he was like, I'll pay you to learn. And he taught me one-on-one -on -one for three days a week, every week for a year. Wow. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'm doing it for the money. I'm an actress. You know, sometimes new actors don't get paid that much. Uh, and I model and I clean houses for a living right now. So this extra income is helping. And so I did it for the money at first. Yeah. And then one day something just clicked and I just saw what was happening. I saw it and I fell in love and I've been inseparable from remote viewing ever since. Oh, that is not the story I was expecting. That is, <laughs> that is fascinating. So, okay. So you, you didn't like grow up with, did you, did you feel like you had some sort of psychic ability growing up? Did you have like experiences through your life? That... Yes. Um, I've always been highly empathic. And so my mother told me when I was younger that I would randomly say something very profound that like a five or six year olds shouldn't be able to say even a two year old like should not be able to say and then I would go back to playing with my dolls I would go back to doing what kids do and my mom would ask me about it later and I wouldn't remember and um and again I was always highly intuitive um she told me even recently just reminded me that I used to talk to my ancestors like my my grandparents who had passed away I would just talk to them and tell her that I see them and I'm this is who I'm talking to this is what we're talking about and um so I've always kind of been like that but I never knew really what it was I just knew I was empathic as I got older I started to realize that I have prophetic dreams so um which is I guess what the Christians will call it you know what, what we call it in the spirit world <laughs> um prophetic dreams and I started to kind of tune in on that like I would see different things and I would see my mom and I would tell her this is what I just saw and she would say I didn't drive a car like that I only drove a car like that when I was like 18 or when I was 16 why, why would you know about that car you know and I was like well this is what I saw and so as I got um older into my adult years in life I started realizing that I could tap in and tune into things and I could just feel things but never really knew that I was psychic or anything I don't even still don't think I'm psychic I know I'm telepathic though but I guess it's the same but I um I just was able to be able to tell how someone was feeling uh when somebody was lying or when someone was going through something if they weren't near me and um I tuned into it I just honed into it I just thought I had a spiritual gift and what remote viewing does it is it enhances all the gifts that you already have. It just enhances it. And it gives you a structure on how to appropriately move through it. And so that's kind of why I'm very honored to actually be a remote viewer because it uncovered things. You know, and as I got on my journey in life and started realizing that I'm a little different, um, the the art of, and I call it an art, you know, the art and the science of remote viewing really, it enhances the abilities you're born with. And then it it, it, it opens them if you don't know that they exist. It um, It opens them for you. So I do have a question. So, so from... From what at what point did you start to connect through this remote viewing with uh, with aliens like Lacerta? And when did that whole picture come in? 
So we started, he started teaching me, you know, months down the line, how to do deep mind probes. And he would have me go to like old ship captains, like people that couldn't see me. He would be like, stand in front of them. He goes, the next time you see somebody, walk up to them and kiss them on the cheek and see if they respond. So I would do that. So I'm over here like kissing strangers. <laughs> Wait, so like a, a ship captain that is alive, like you saw on the docks or something or someone you were right. imagining in time? Okay. Well, like a ship captain, I mean, in in the session, you know. Right, someone, but where is this uh, ship captain? Was he a, a real per like a person that you or just imagining this? Oh, no, it was a person like it would be like a like he would send me to a war, right? Okay. Or like a Navy, a Navy ship or something. And I would figure out that I'm on water. I would figure out that there's a structure on the water. I would figure out that there is, um, there are subjects there. I would find the main subject and then bam, main subject is, is um, captain, captain of the ship, right? Walk up, walk up to him. Okay. Does he see you? I don't know. Like I didn't know at that time how to really hone in on it. Um, I didn't know then how to really hone in on it. And so it was like, um, what, what, sorry, <laughs> walk up to him and kiss him on the cheek. So I'm like, okay, I do it. No one does anything. He didn't do anything. All right. Uh, tell me what he's thinking. Well, how am I supposed to do that? You know, so I just started off with people and I can't think of how many years it was um, before I started tapping into aliens, I went to the Phoenix Lights. And he, I think that was around my first year to two years in on it, my first year to two years. And I went to the Phoenix Lights and, um, and I talked to him. He goes, this guy is a friend of mine. You know, he's safe. You can go talk to him. And so I spoke to him and he spoke back. And he and I was like, he spoke back. Like it wasn't like the Navy ship captain that couldn't talk back to me. And he was like, that's great. Good. That's wonderful. And so things just went on and on and on. I've been doing this for almost 11 years. So I can't remember my full first first encounter I remember the the first time I went to the base on Mars and I was able to kind of see what they were doing there but what I remember most in having a full conversation with was Bashar huh. and I um went and I talked to him and I thought that was phenomenal like just amazing to be able to have someone just having a back and forth conversation with the um an extraterrestrial you know a, a being a, even a person and somehow I guess I became the reptilian investigator <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well that's something that's definitely come through clear is, um, and Courtney talks about, you have a special relationship with the reptilians. And the the first um, session I watched was the Lacerta interview, because I've been fascinated by the Lacerta files for several years. And that was the, the it, when I first realized UFOs were real, and that means something, something is real. Uh, somehow I came straight to the Lacerta file and I read it and I was like, oh, my gosh, well, this is my baseline. This might just be true. Now I have to work off of this. And I've just and I'm also fascinated by Lacerta. Lacerta, just reading that file, I'm like something so interesting about who she is and her relationship with the reptilian, the reptilians and humanity. And then when I watched your um and I came across the the far site and and watched your uh, whole video with that and and I just watched it. I listened to it again this morning. Your entire interview, your portion with Lacerta, it it, it continues to sort of blow my mind. Um, so before we get into that, I have sort of a general question. Like, so can you uh, now once you make contact with someone like Lacerta or there's several others that at times you've made contact with, like you just mentioned Bashar, 
could you just contact them again? Could you just like tonight go home and say, I want to contact Lacerta again and talk to her? I haven't been trained to do that. So I don't know the yes or no answer to that. But what I can say is that it is possible to revisit something. So there was a time when I I did, um, it was like an interview podcast and they were asking me about something I had seen. Was it the Yellow River uh, situation with the, the gold or the hidden treasure? I can't remember. I've done so many things. Yeah. And I was able to, while I was talking about it, kind of tap back into the place and like visualize and see it and, you know, but I have not, except for when I went back to revisit the target itself. So I guess I can, I guess it is possible because I do that when I go on video. Yeah. When I go on video, I, um, I have had a paper session and so I've experienced it. And then what I do is I go through it, talk about what I saw, and then sometimes I'll tap back in and ask more questions. So I, it may be possible if I meditate specifically for it. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I mean, I guess you could just use the same target uh, code and, but you, but that's not something apparently that you guys do. Like you haven't, uh, you haven't ever gone and, and contacted Lacerta again or targeted that Lacerta target again to see if you could talk more with her. The most we have done was as a company or as a, as a group, gone back in to um to the target itself unknowingly so the thing about the way we remote view is that it's always blind and so that way we don't allow our conscious mind to seek in so my thing about going back in and knowing where i'm going i could get distorted information because i have a wild imagination right? right So I could get distorted information. So, but it is something that I do want to do because like, especially with Lacerda, um, she was, I'm trying to find the words. (laughs) She, (laughs) I don't even think I followed the target with that, with that. I don't remember. I do so many sessions a month. So like, <laughs> um, but I, I don't, I don't think I even followed the target. I think immediately I veered off and just started like having a conversation. <laughs> yeah, you, you did. Yeah, I mean, the target was the actual moment of the Lacerta interview in that apparently cabin in the woods in Sweden or something. But you, it seemed you immediately made a contact with Lacerta in a different, she wasn't, she was in her, seemed her home base is the way you described it. Some, some type of home base. And you described that she had, uh, she was like somehow tapped into an artificial intelligence that was helping her keep tabs on the environment. So it seemed like she was in some way the, uh, like the, like the queen in, in charge of, of that, that group in some way. It was, it was really, yeah, it was very, um, so yeah, it seems to me like you, like you, you, you connect and I, and then she made an interesting comment during your session saying she was able to speak with you comfortably because she was talking from her memories. And she said, because of that, she couldn't be the, the people that snoop or spy on her could not hear it. I don't know if you remember that, but I was, it was, uh, I do remember that, um, yeah she did not like it was it, this was like probably one of the most telepathic conversations that I really actually had like she did not use her mouth much she it was like you know how when we do our deep mind probes we're going in and we're kind of skimming through and now I can ask a question they can answer like what we're doing right now but because it's in a different language because obviously there are different species um it the the telepathy portion of things helps it to translate or interpret helps me to interpret it through English. So sometimes there are language barriers where I'm trying to figure out exactly what they're saying. But with her, 
it was kind of like, like she touched me or like stared into me and gave me her memories. Like, so she didn't have to speak it. So the, the bad ETs could not access it and stop her from doing it. I was able to get the, the uncut truth versus a lot of times when I come in contact with uh, extraterrestrials that are uh, free will, authority, you know, free will ones, the good guys, even some of the bad guys that don't want to be bad, um, but they're forced to, you know, for their life. A lot of the times their their information is coded. And what I do is they can't they won't tell me straight up. So I'm the I'm the bad guy and I'm basically kidnapping their information. Like I'm I'm like, give me the information or I'll take it, basically. It's kind of mean. I'm like, I kind of bully them. <laughs> Like, give me the information or I will get the information. Yeah. It's up to you. But for the longest, I didn't know that me doing that violated them. I had no idea that uh, me doing that was a viol felt like they were being violated. But I had to let them know, well, that's what your kind does to our people. You know, we feel like we're being violated and taken over when when these when your same tactics are being used on us and so that was a conversation but a lot of the times the answers the, the responses are coded because if they tell us their truth and obviously if they tell us they're the big master plan they can get in trouble yeah. but if i take it unwillingly right they won't get in trouble i've broken in Okay, it's got so many, so many questions. So, let's sticking with Lacerta. Lacerta said that she was somehow a uh, a peacekeeper, preventing it seemed war. She said it's like like she was a diplomatic liaison between. She said her people, which I assume she kind of was saying the reptilian species or some of the reptilian species, not not all of it, and humanity. I assume. And um, she even said something like um, that uh, she said the her people were the ones that were most collared, imprisoned, it seemed, um, and that she seemed to say that their land was taken away. I don't know if she meant by humanity um, in some way and that maybe um, I don't know if your impression. I mean, did you get the impression Lacerta was like on earth somewhere underground somewhere it, it, did you get that sense or what did you think she mentioned area 51 that she had been there but mm -hmm. um she said she wasn't there anymore did you get any sense about that i'm trying to go back in and see if i can remember remember my cover because i i remember a lot of things but that right there i'm trying to pick up on I do remember her saying, I, I was, when I spoke to her, if she was on land, she was in a very secluded, like on our land, she was in a very secluded space. Um, I, I, because I go in blind, I don't always make the connection until I'm told where I went. And so now I'm trying to pick up on that frequency. And it's like, yes, she says that She was taken. She was taken from her place. He's not a human like, you know, like the greys or even the insectoids. Like she doesn't look like that. She looks, she looks like a um like the alien off of Alien versus Predator. Wow. You know, but more beautiful. 
you know, like a beautiful version of that, you know? Uh, and, and I say that because a lot of people feel like just because it looks like the English version of, or the human version of what they say monstrous is, that it's not pretty. But just, I, I just saw a different species, beautiful in her own way, beautiful in, in her species. And she, she had the, you know, the hunched look. She had that, the, you know, she didn't have the circular face. It was very rigid, you know, and she was tall and animal-like, you know. Um, so she looks different. And so to humans, she looks threatening. So when someone looks threatening or different, which you know the human the human race, the human culture, we go and we take it from from where it is and we tell it it has to comply and or we're gonna hurt you. You know, and that's what they did to her. It was it was like a like like the like a genocide of her species and she was like the head of that species. And they would let her move about, but they kept her on lock, like a tracker, I guess. And I do believe she was here on, on this planet, maybe in, in one of the Area 51 areas. I think there are more than two. I know of two, but I feel like there are more than two. Um, I'm very, I'm not privy to the stuff out in the world. Like I don't watch TV, I don't social media. So like, I'm like the last to know most things. Um, I remote view and I'm mom. <laughs> that's, that's that's about it i kind of need to get a life but i'm <laughs> but with that it helps me to be more pure to the information i'm getting because like i don't know what's out there i'm i'm kind of like a baby like i really don't know what's out there i see it through remote viewing i left the country for the first time in my entire life last month and it was an amazing experience like i've never left home and or seen home or seen anything away from home except for through remote viewing. Wow. So, okay. So let's see, are there, I kind of have a, a couple, a, a range of questions. Are yes. there, are there rules or laws that govern telepathic viewing or contacting people's brains and in, in mind is are, like you say, I mean, it seems a ton of alien species seem to have the ability to do telepathy and you, you know, and so is there, is there any laws or are there like um, agreements or a culture of what's polite or impolite? Or is it, is it like a highway of telepathic, like invaders constantly streaming and peering into our brains? Like, do you, do you have a sense of that? And do you have a, like, do you have protection against that? Like, can you block it? You you mentioned like at times, like it seems some people, some beings have the ability to block it, or maybe there's technology that can block it. How does, what's your description of that? So I can give you my personal opinion because I don't have a fact. I like to make sure I state that. <laughs> yeah. um, in my experience, uh we all, and by we all, I mean people who are telepathic, we all have a way to block. Most of us just don't know it because we're taught, you know, these things do not exist in life. So other species are taught how to do that from birth. This is how you block. This is how you make it hard for a different frequency. This is how you change your channel. We're taught to dull that. And so... When 777, look, numbers popping up. And so, <laughs> and so, and I just found this out from my last session. So you probably got to get a sneak peek. Uh, I don't know where I went yet. So I don't know, but little sneak peek here. <laughs> what I have found out from whoever I just spoke to this month, like I said, I'd never know where I went until like a month later, is that we all have that ability. Some of us remember it when we come into this life and into this body and we try to grab onto it and hold onto it. And that's what makes people special or clairvoyant or clairaudient, you know, all the things 
that's how some people are very aware and how we have mediums and how we have all those things. People who use this psi ability. Within that psi ability, there are protections. I am learning to develop my own. I still catch frequencies here and there. That's why I wear a lot of copper um, or I'll have crystals. I say a prayer because I'm very spiritual, but it has been hard. I have had psychic attacks before, but because I'm so strong mind minded, they couldn't fully jump in. So they just made me faint. I would have fainting spells. Now this is via other extraterrestrials. Now human to human, I don't know that law, but I'm sure there is a courtesy. You know, you can't just walk in someone's house. We got to knock first, even if it's a stranger. You know, if you bump into somebody, so let's say I accidentally tap into someone's frequency, I can choose to tune out or I can choose to tune in. But what is that karma? What's that karma do to me? If I choose to tune into someone's frequency without permission, then that means someone could do that to me. So I do, I do my best to make sure I stay in a peer space, in a respectful space. Like even with my family, um, I'll tune into something. If I do, I'll let them know. If it's my partner, I'll say, hey, what's going on? I felt something, right? Now you know I've tuned into you. My son asked me, how did you know that? Well, honey, your mom's telepathic, um, <laughs> you know? And, and so when it comes to remote viewing, do we have protocols for protection? No. Do we need protocols for protection? Yes. Did I know that in the beginning? Absolutely not. Do I think that Dr. Brown knows that we need it? Absolutely not. Because each one of us experiences something different. And I'm the one that's most sensitive. And I have found my own way of protection. So I say a prayer, you know, higher self, highest being, and even to my great spirit, protect me when I go in. Um, let me see what needs to be seen. Let me hear what needs to be heard. Let me say what needs to be said, you know, um, but keep keep me keep me safe while I'm here. So okay, I do well, have a question, if you don't mind. So how do you differentiate mm -hmm. from other beings from your higher self? Well, you know who you are. Right. Um, not really. <laughs> right. Not really. <laughs> right. That too. But also, but also, yes, our, we know our frequency recognizes our frequency. Our higher self knows who we are. And that's what matters. We're our, our physical body is nothing but an ant size, a pinky nail size of who we are. So we're so big and so omnipotent and so effervescent that because we are also omnipotent that means self knows that means whether we know we know we know i i'm not looking for myself myself is helping me look for someone else so i'm not going to find me unless i'm going in specifically to find me i have had situations like when i did buddha and I've done Sadatha like two or three times. But the last time I picked up on an African-American woman or a brown woman, I try not to do a uh, culture or races because I don't know. So I picked up on a brown woman. So I thought I was finding a brown woman. In hindsight, I was like, maybe that brown woman was me tapped into Sadatha's mind. And since he's who he is, <sighs> Since he's who he is, maybe, like, he chose to come back. And so he knows when he came back that he's been here. He knows that he, like, I will go through their eyes and see what they see. So I felt like he was seeing me, seeing him, seeing me, but I only felt that in hindsight once I recognized it. And so in that term, I don't think I picked up on if it were me or not, or if Siddhartha's spirit has come in many forms, including a brown woman. So interesting. Um, yeah. Did you, did you have a follow-up, Dora? Or, or... No, I think that's interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah, thanks. 
So, okay. So the, I was going to ask you about the higher self. Um, cause I've seen you during sessions, uh, you, you stop and you check with the higher self sometimes. And so I was like, uh, I guess one thing is, um, we might have to, uh, the viewers might not be aware of this, but there's a concept of the death traps that, uh, Farsight has been talking about and studying a lot. And it's, um, in a nutshell, it seems that the, the narrative of it is that, uh, when we die, there seems to be some sort of trap that some beings are trying to make us come back down into earth, into another body, another life for some reason. And it's sort of, it's similar to the reincarnation, uh, cycle that's been described in many religions. Um, so before getting deep into the death trap, I just because I know you're well familiar with it, of course, um, what is the relationship of the higher self to this death trap situation? Is the is do you feel like your higher self is like outside of it and not uh, not being like um, forced back into bodies or is it or is the higher self a part of you that is also being like. Uh, taken through this process or does the higher self have its memories wiped like we do or does the higher self keep its memories at all times like does that make sense it makes sense keep asking the question in all the ways while i'm tuning into my thought on that okay uh well i because mean I... Um, yeah well it's, it's really just trying to understand what i, I it's just whenever you've said I want to check with my higher self. I'm just always curious. I've what exactly that. are you checking with? What is it you're contacting there? You know? Wait, wait. You're telling me that I have said that out loud? Yeah. I've heard you say, oh. let me check with my higher self. And I'm like, what, what does she mean? What does she mean by that? What exactly is, she, are you asking a question? Is Are you getting a response? Like, are you hearing a response from your higher self? Or is it like, God? Are you connecting with some sort of concept of God in that moment? Well, I believe that we are all a concept of God. That's my personal belief. Like we all, you know, depending on how you look at spirituality or religion or whatever, I believe that we are all a concept of the higher being, which is how we have a higher self and an oversoul. And we're all pieces of it. So we all have the knowledge. But we have to retain it and keep it and remember it, right? That's why they say, you got to wake up, you know, open your eye, open your first eye or your third eye, you know. I don't recall saying I need to check with my higher self, which is so I'm mind blown right now. <laughs> because in remote viewing, I tap out sometimes. Like I'm no longer there. I'm wherever I am. Like I'm traveling. I'm no longer there. So are you asking me if my higher self is privy to the death traps while remote viewing it? Or are you asking me if when I die, my higher self is in or out of it? Yeah, I guess I'm I'm trying I'm kind of like imagining, is it possible that we each have a a like a higher self part of us that is not that is not being, I don't know, tortured by the death trap cycle at all? Is it completely outside of it? And, or is it being churned through this? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I just try and understand. That's the an nature. amazing question. And I'm thinking, I totally wish you would have given me like a month to think about that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that, but I, I love it. And now it makes me think. If like, like for me, I feel like when I die, because I, have been privy to the traps I'm going to recognize it because of my higher self I feel like maybe if we're connected to it and we are aligned with it then maybe it is trapped but we can communicate and it can get us through it which is why some get out of the traps now this is again my personal opinion um no facts so 
also, so there's parts, levels, right, to this, to where, where I'm going with what you just asked me. And let me know if I'm answering your question. Also, there is the fact of, like what you just said, the higher self not at all being trapped in it. And maybe those are the ones that get sucked away. So like maybe the ones who's higher, who, who, if you're not, if you're not tethered to it or connected to it, then you can't learn from it. Right. You can't pick up on the frequency. So when I'm checking in with my higher self, I am checking in and I'm going, I'm tapping into the thing that's omnipotent. I'm tapping into the all knowing self. And what I always say, and I'm, I'm trying to put my phone down right here so I can show you is when we're remote viewing, this is our, our mind, right? This is our subconscious, our conscious and our subconscious mind. And this is our higher self. And it, it waits. Our target coordinates have nothing to do with the project. They are a distraction. And so what happens is we're like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And at that time, the higher self is opening little like this. I mean, our, our, our lower form, our lower self, our where we are now is starting to open and our higher self goes, I have this much time to get this much information through. And, and then it closes back up immediately. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have this information. All right. That's the best I could get through in that moment. So our higher self knows, but if we're not open to it and awakened and receptive to what our higher self is telling us, we, oh, that's a wild thought. Oh, no, that could be real. That's not real because of what we've been taught in our human form. We are spiritual beings living a human life, not the other way around. And so my belief, and this is my personal belief, this is nothing I've been taught. This is just based on my experiences, is that if we are not connected to the higher form, that we don't get the messages. And if we are not connected to the higher form, then it is not trapped with us. So we're wandering aimlessly. And it and we the way we reconnect with our higher self is when we wake up in this lifetime, in this world, in this universe. It's, this is when we wake up. I've made that connection. I've understood that there's a bigger version of myself i i know that i can communicate with it not as a separate entity we are one just as a higher version as that high vibrational frequency and that's how i view the higher self so when i do i do i do realize i, I might say it i'm checking it let me check in with myself real quick like my true self we go in and and tap in and i'm like self what is going on here and then self goes, this is what's going on here. And then I tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is actually, I've studied a lot of Buddhism and it completely lines up, you know, the, the pulling in and the, and the connecting with this higher knowing is called insight, like insight meditation. Maybe you've heard of it. Similar. It's Vipassana. Um, and so, yeah, everything you're saying, it's it kind of like puzzle pieces fitting into the Buddhist picture as well. So I just want to point that out. It's very interesting. That's yeah. wonderful because I am a Buddhist practitioner. So I lost my cahoots when I went there. <laughs> but um, my biggest goal is to really live the uh, a correct Buddhist life. And in Reiki, I... I am a, I'm attuned to all. I'm a Reiki master, but my personal attunement is Han Shaza Shongin, which means correct Buddhist mind. And so I think it's amazing um, that that was the case. That that's the one that came up for me in my reading, for me to be like strongly connected to. Um, I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, and I um, my goal is to have is to live in true mindfulness. And so in the Buddhist way of true mindfulness uh, is to really be so connected with self 
that you're not worried about anything external. And that's how you can really soar. And that's how you're connected to source, the source within you. Because remember, I believe that I'm source too. And that you are source. And that he or she or they are source. We just have to remember that we're source. That we are of that highest state. That we are of that high Buddha. And so it's amazing that you said that. That's a really strong connection for me. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Matt. All right, did you, did you yeah, something? what's next? Okay. Um, okay. So I guess back to the big picture about farsight. So if, if, if farsight is what it says it is, if you guys, if remote viewing is real and you guys, and it really is as powerful as it seems to be. And it seems to me that farsight, the farsight Institute is one of the most powerful and most important organizations and groups of people on earth right now. Uh, and so that's a big thing to be. And so I'm really curious. And, and it also seems, I mean, it's clear the U.S. government has studied remote viewing, try to use it for spying, Stanford study it. There's no way the U.S. government and the CIA or any government on earth has stopped using it if it works. So they have to feel, they have to feel uh, something about the Farsight Institute. And so, I mean, I guess some people might wonder, is the Farsight Institute actually controlled by the U.S. government or the CIA? Or are, do, you, do you feel threatened by the governments or foreign or domestic governments or alien? I mean, it, do you guys feel like, uh, yeah, do you have some sort of relationship with governments or alien groups that have directly contacted you in some way? You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I mu I muted because I know that I, I you can probably hear the um the driving. So I when you're talking, I want to try to silence it as much as possible. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> but um, to my knowledge, I don't know. <laughs> my when I first started, my mom was like, "No, you need a real job. What if the CIA?" take you away because you're doing this like she was panicking so <laughs> that's a legit question I still often wonder like when I do certain things I'm like side-eyeing Courtney like are they gonna come get me <laughs> <laughs> I'm like side-eyeing Courtney so I've had these same thoughts I'm side-eyeing him and I'm sitting here like I think recently I did something I don't know if it's published yet so I don't want to say what it is I think it was I call him baby uh baby Kennedy um the, the, Bobby Kennedy, whatever, yeah. whatever Kennedy is doing something now, <laughs> yeah. again, I don't pay attention to the TV or to like, you know, to, to the stuff out, out outside. I don't pay attention much to it. It's so much distortion. But um, so whatever's going on with baby Kennedy, I found something out. And and like even with a couple of the other presidents, I found out like something that was happening because I've been in their minds and I don't know whose mind I'm in. So I'm telling all their business. And then when I find out, I'm like, oh my God, did I tell on somebody? Did I get somebody in trouble? <laughs> like, what's gonna happen? <laughs> oh my God, did I get somebody in trouble? Like, that, I think that what I do know what is that there was a time where they did not want for me teaching this. And so they basically tapped his phone. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but whatever, I'm saying it. But they're basically like, tapped his phones and like stayed in direct contact with um like with him and checked him and then one day they finally gave permission they finally gave permission for him to do what he's doing but at first they did not like it at first they um they didn't like it they did not um approve of it and they stalked the company now right. yes of course they still stalked the company but they kind of watch for what we're saying so i think like i said i, I post we posted something about baby kennedy i don't know if it's gone out yet so i'm not going to say anything about it. Uh, there's oh, definitely okay. the... Okay. all right we're, we're... the bobby kennedy yeah, there was a Bobby Kennedy uh, assassination plan uh, video 
that right. was uh, released. That, yeah. So it's been posted. Okay, I haven't I haven't caught up to like all the stuff we're doing because I'm doing it, so I don't get to watch it in real time. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So with Kennedy, the whole assassination with him. Um. He. Uh, um. He, Courtney told. I was like, why can't we stop this? This is terrible. And he said, because we posted it, the military's watching us. The government is watching us. So because we posted it, there's a possibility that it won't happen because now they're going to put things in place to stop it from happening. Or maybe something less atrocious will happen if something does happen because people are on it. And if the good guys and the bad guys are watching us to know what's going on, they can manipulate and move. So it's kind of like a catch-22 um, are we working hand in hand with the CIA? To my knowledge, no. But at this point in life, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. At this point in life, we've done so much stuff that that it's 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 highly possible that like I have always had this weird dream, and it's probably it's not like a physical dream, like I've seen it, but it's like this weird thought that crosses my mind, like one day. The government's going to call Farsight and they're going to need our help. And now we got to do the things. And I get so nervous about that because I'm like, what if my conditions aren't met? Because I have to, be, I'm a princess when it comes to this. I have to, I have to be fed appropriately. I have to be have the right amount of affection. I have to hear nice words and meditate for two hours and eat again. I have to have a good amount of water uh, to cold smoothie beverage to hot tea ratio like <laughs> like i'm spoiled and i'm like if i get kidnapped by the government they're going to need to meet my demands if they want me to work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's i mean you laugh you have such a joyful energy about it but it, i mean it's it a really, little scary <laughs> yeah i mean it's it is uh really wonder about it um there's well, okay. Well, here's a question: Do do people ever contact Farsight and try to? Can they hire you, Farsight, or can people hire you to do remote viewing a target of their choosing? Like, is that anything that ever happens? All the time. Um, they they'll call. So, well, a lot of the viewers' emails are out personally. So, a lot of people that are really following, they contact us personally. Can we? Can you do this X Y Z? Um, sometimes they will contact Courtney and he'll forward us the message so absolutely you can have a session and um contact us uh, sometimes I can teach you how to be the targeter or the tasker so that because a lot of people want me to do the work but a lot of times I get an email and they've told me all the things so I can't <laughs> do it so I have to um task it for another viewer right to do it and so sometimes it's a two viewer uh thing and we have a you know a fee for it uh other times i can say okay tell me the barrel minimum these are the things you're allowed to tell me and um this is what you need to do to task it so i have done i have taught someone how to task it for me so that i can do it um or we'll team up like i'll call one of the other viewers and say hey can you task something for me i need you to contact this person or if they told me, hey, I have a target, can you, you know, but we definitely do that. Wow. So what I'm, I'm, I think I know what task means, but what, what, can you clarify? Can you so task? The task yeah. Yes, the tasker is the person that is front loaded. So we know, so if I'm the tasker, let's say when I'm teaching, I'm your tasker or monitor. Um, I know what we're doing. I know where we're going and what's needed i know all the details that are verifiable i'm gonna give you the target hey you have a target name it target two or whatever it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the name is name it this now i have written down target two um and then i've written in depth the information on what the target is. I've made a connection with it. If there are any visuals, I've made sure to take a visual of it in within my mind, um, or I know about it. And then I have the things that I want to know about it that I don't know that are not verifiable. Once the remote viewer makes contact with 
the target, once the remote viewer makes contact with the target and gets all the verifiable data and it's right, it's correct, I can then move them into finding, because they're in there now without knowing. I can then move them into finding out the things I want to know. So it's like a spider web of information that falls. So here's what's test. Here's what we know. So Lacerta files. We have the Lacerta files. The information on that document is what the target was. Did I connect with that person in that place talking about those things? Yes. Okay. What else can you find? Okay. All right. So the, there's a tasker, there's the, the remote viewer and the target. Yeah. I just need to get the terminology. <laughs> so what's yeah. next? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of curious about that process. So if you're the remote viewer and, and I'm, if I'm the tasker, I'm, I'm like, I would say your target is target X, Y, Z, and then you would do a remote viewing session. Um, and then you would tell me the tasker, you know, I, or I'd get some result of what you had. And then I could guide you a little further. Like you, you identified two subjects or something. I could say deep mind probe subject one or something like that, or would that basically. possibly? Okay. Yeah. That's a simplistic version. Yeah, basically, yes. The basic way, the basic answer is yes. Okay. Uh, that's kind of how it works. And you would say, you know, uh, the first subject you found on whichever page this was, what you said, X, Y, and Z, um, that's uh, subject, subject A. Let's just call them subject A. Usually I'll label them myself. So the first one I find will be subject A. Second one I find will be subject B. Unless... Courtney has something different for us to say um, because they have numbers written down. But if nothing's written down because you don't know all that's there in that space, um, the I, I would I would typically label it if I'm dealing with people that don't know fully how to target. And then you will say, OK, on your subject, a, uh, what what type of job do they do? Okay. I'll go in and I find it. Can you tell me their psychological profile, you know, or, uh, and then, and then you're quiet, you know, you can either, you can even just type it up and send those questions to me, but you have to be mindful not to give me any information during those questions. You know what it is. So I want to know if they are connected to group C. Okay. I don't know what group C is, but you do. Group C is the government, or group C is Farsight, or group C is my family reunion in Tennessee. Like, you know, whatever it is that we're viewing is connected to that. And yeah, absolutely. We can just okay. figure that out. And does that process of back and forth happen over in real time over a, like a three hour session, or is it, could it be over days? you know, so that you'd have to tap in again to subject, you know, they, you got the question about subject A, the next day you have to like go back to the target and do it like. Yeah, both, um, both, both okay. ways. Um, typically with people who are paying me to uh, do the session, I don't allow them to be on, on my session with me. Whoa. <laughs> sorry i, I, thought I don't we lost allow <laughs> them to be on my session with me um just because they don't know what they're doing yeah and so they easily <laughs> mess me up right but um what i will do is i'll do the session i email it to them secondly you will say hey you found a box over there uh, can you go inside or there was a structure over there can you go inside or you know whatever um, I'm because you know what you're looking for so you're you're going to try to and you'll you'll email me all those things and then I'll do it again every now and again I'll have a small zoom call and you'll talk to me about it and then you'll email me what it is and then another day whenever I have the space and time because I work for our site full time okay. um, if I'm not working for our site I'm teaching and so I have to, you know, I have to do it on my own schedule. So I, I give, I tell you, give me this, 
uh, I have a contract and I say, we, we're going to have three months to complete your target. Okay. These are the stipulations um, because I have to do it on the off days. You know, I have yeah. to make sure Farsight gets done first. And um, so, uh, yeah. Great. That is, that is so interesting. Um, and I, so, okay. I got I had some sort of like random jump around questions um i'll start with elizabeth april do you know who that is have you heard of elizabeth april okay uh just check in she's she's another uh she's a person online who does a lot of remote viewing um so i had a ton of followers and uh so i've like i've like listened to a lot of her um remote viewing studies on what's going on with the reptilians and stuff and so i was just curious like always curious do people know about each other and I um, don't look at anything I am completely oblivious to the remote viewing community I had no idea that there were this many weird people in the world to be honest <laughs> I just thought I was weird and I was like there's no way people know about this and then there's like whole communities and then like the government does it and I'm like oh so like I have no clue I'm about to speak at a conference a disclosure now conference in July super oh. excited about it um, I'll give you guys more information on that near the end of the, the uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, but I'm one of the VIP speakers. I'm terrified and excited. Um, <laughs> cause I'm like, I'm like all these people that's been doing this before I was born. And then there's me. Um, <laughs> and that is so, so great. Where is that? Do you know, where is it, it going to happen? Uh, so, little, little Serata, is that, did I say it right? Serata beach in Florida. Okay. That area. It'll all be right. that area. Um, so there is a, uh, and I'll send you flyer and like take a ticket links and everything if you like, and you can totally post it for the podcast and stuff. Great. But, um, I, um, doo -doo -doo, sorry, I just pulled up at my son's school and my brain stopped. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Um, but where was I? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, you were just saying how you, you weren't familiar with all the crazy remote viewers. Right. I had no idea about all this stuff. This is a good spot. Well, I'm kind of, I'm oh, okay. I had no idea about um, any of these things. And so I didn't know other people knew about these things. Like I said, I just thought Courtney was weird and <laughs> and that I was weird for going along with it. Um, and then I realized there's CRV and ARV and LRV and LMNOP, who knows, like all these different RVs that I had no idea about that I'm still learning about to this day and different processes and people that can do it naturally, like off paper and people that can do it uh, in their dreams. And I'm like, all this exists. So like, I had no idea. And then like the communities and podcasts and millions of people believe in aliens and magic and like I think I emailed you and told you I was totally jealous of your name because I want to start my own podcast and I'm like aliens and meditation makes sense for me you <laughs> have it <laughs> yeah well, I, you can, you I can get a lot of comments podcast. about that you know it seems to catch a lot of people's attention so that's amazing yeah um uh, so can I ask, are you, are you, uh, do you, are you a part of any organized religion? Is that, is that a too personal question or just? It's not personal at all. Yes, no is the question. I mean, you said <laughs> you're a answer. Buddhist. Yeah. Um, I, Buddhism is not a religion. It's a practice. Okay. Um, I do practice Buddhism. I grew up a very heavily, I grew up African Methodist and then switched into Southern Baptist and then um, as I got older, moved more into spirituality. Now I do work within a religion through spirituality, uh, uh, African religion uh, called Ifa and, and whatnot. It, it, it's more like religion and spirituality had a baby. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Um, are, this is a sort of a general question are are you aware of like different groups or different religions having any special connections or relationships with specific groups of aliens like is that anything that you 
Um, I'm just curious. I know, when you say specific groups of aliens, what do you mean? Um, well, I mean, I guess, I guess that we could start with in your, based on what you've experienced and learned, do you, we're, we, I've been told by, um, uh, you know, there's, well, basically in the ufology world, it seems there's agreement that there's reptilian aliens, there's gray aliens, tall and short gray aliens, and there's mantid, these sort of insectoid aliens, and there are human looking um, or very human appearing uh, aliens. Those seem to be the, the four major groups that seem to be, that seem to exist and seem to be active on Earth. And I'm just curious if you have understand of any knowledge that any of these groups are like tied to any specific group or culture or institution on earth to your knowledge, like a. Are you specific. asking if like, if the grays are associated with Methodist Christians, like, is that how you're asking sure, that or a country or a, even a, a specific location on earth? Like or Judaism any... or yeah, that Judaism is a mystery to me. You know, is Ooh. there a specific race connected to, to Judaism? Yeah, that's a good question. Or Catholics. That is a good question. Catholics, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to explore that and then come back on here and talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I never would have thought to think about that before. Oh. What I do know, based off of my remote viewing, I have to give these disclaimers. Um, what I have seen is, okay, Jesus, we'll, we'll go to Jesus. Did you watch that? Yeah. Right. So based off of the remote viewing for how many five remote viewers uh, and different settings at different times and different places, non-communicating, we all got the same thing. And we all got that, yes, there is a Yeshua, right? However, the man that we believe as Jesus Christ is a different man as Yeshua. So the one that died on the cross is not Yeshua, is not the 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 original Jesus. The teacher that was going around did not yeah, die it, on the cross. It, yeah. Now, was he a sacrifice for the things? But was it in full the original? No, they basically got him out and put in a decoy. And he, to me, appeared to be extraterrestrial. Now, usually when I tap into other beings, I'll do my best to say beings before I say ET. And so that makes me wonder what type of extraterrestrial. And then you said, you know, Judaism and all that thing. So you might have something there, you know, mm -hmm. and these are all thoughts and opinions, none, nothing factual. Um, mm -hmm. I have to give my disclaimers so no one goes, Yimmy said. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, well, that ties to another uh, session you did, which is in really fascinating one which is the one on lucifer and when you did the lucifer one it was uh first of all it was fascinating it seemed that lucifer was seemed like a man it seemed like a, a human like a warlord but when you did then you the tar next target was the greatest opponent of lucifer you uh you seemed it seemed it was a being that saw you and it seemed very powerful and very different than lucifer lucifer was very aggressive and dark but this other being the opponent of lucifer seemed very much like a god-like figure it almost seemed you described seemed to have a beard seemed to behave very god-like and how it like a like a i don't know the way you would think of god a, a god-like figure speaking so do you have anything what are your impressions of both of those beings anything more you could share that from your memory about especially the the one the opponent of lucifer that's the being that really it seemed like I'm trying to figure out 
who was that? What was that? Was that God? Was that like? I believe that that was our representation of of a higher source. I am trying to go back and remember because that was a few years ago for me. Okay. Um, I think about two years ago for me. Um, maybe even three, if I'm not mistaken, because these years are going back kind of quickly. So I, I got to go back in my memory. I remember Lucifer because that was what the target was. The other right. guy was someone I just tuned into. Um, I, I was wondering if Lucifer was Enki. Are you familiar with Enki and, and Leo? I am not. Oh, they are, they are aliens. I would like you to connect with them. Boy, that would be. Send me an email about that. So oh, I can... boy. They, I mean, these I are. I might the... have come in contact with them and just don't know. These are the original gods that were supposed to have settled and, and come from extraterrestrial space mm. to earth and they were the originals and the, this is all in the cuneiform tablets of an ancient babylon Th this is new archaeology they are translating these clay tablets and this is the story that enki was the original that and and uh, and leel was the older brother but they are the ones that got mankind started they were our creators interesting I don't yeah. know about them or anything. What I um what I do know is that there are higher beings. And I believe that there are multiple higher beings, but those are belief systems, right? And so I try not to add belief systems into the remote viewing just because I see so much. Right? Like even down to like Christianity, you know, down to Jesus like that. That was kind of uh, when I went to the war in heaven, I cried for two days because it went against everything I was taught about heaven. So I separate myself from the belief systems when I'm remote viewing. But as far as the higher being, I think it might have been more of a angel, maybe a close angel to source. Um, if I'm remembering, but I've got to go back and watch it and see, because again, I did that session years ago and I do about six or seven targets a month. That's so wild. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so question, this is uh, the mantids. Like the, the the mantid aliens have have come up very don't come up very often it seems they, they've they've only made a few appearances in farsight remote viewing and so I'm just curious do you have any sort of impression of um, the mantid aliens like what their relationship or role is on Earth or with other aliens do you, based on what you've experienced. We haven't done much with them. Like you just said, we we haven't done much with them. But I'm throwing my consciousness back into the space. Name me the question again, please. The mantid aliens. What are their? Who are they? Is there? What are they doing? Why are they here? I believe that with some meditation, I could tap into that and see. And maybe you guys can write Farsight to have us um, research that more because yeah, was, we are seeing the most prominent ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we see who we tap into. And so if these guys are hiding off on the sides, kind of peeking around watching, I'm not going to pick up on them often. Sure. 
And so maybe with there being an actual full target around them, we could all gain more information on who and why they're here. <laughs> so can you go back in time? Because I was telling Matt, I I think when I was a little girl, I had an experience with a mantid and I I didn't I just wasn't sure if you could go back in time, you know, because that was probably 60 years ago or more. Absolutely. I oh, about three years ago went back in time into a man named Tony Rodriguez. His mind, while he was a 10-year-old boy, um, he's older than me. So while he was a 10-year-old boy in the Secret Space program, and I helped him get his memories back. And I didn't know who this person was. And he went and bought a class for me and took my class. And I'm staring at his name. And I'm like, this name sounds familiar. But I'm just to teach in my class, minding my own business. And then he brought it up in the middle of class. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like I've never met somebody whose head I've been inside before, so that was wicked weird. weird. <laughs> Interesting, um, but definitely I crossed I cross time all the time. That was my first experience, and that's exactly what remote viewing is. I call us we're all time travelers oh. in the truest form, and we go back and forward. And like I said, I went back, and because I went back, I saved this little kid's life, who is now a prominent person in remote viewing and in the world, you know, and out teaching. And I get to share a stage with him in July. And I'm so excited. Wow. That's great. Wow. Gave him all of his memories back and now he's able to talk about them. Fantastic. Well well this has been so amazing. Um I, I think we can we can we can wrap it up here. I, my mind is blown and I just want to digest all this. And I think uh, Thoreau and I are going to talk about like, oh, what, what, I mean, bringing you back for some follow-ups or I think th are, there's so many potentials because the, the potential is infinite. If, I mean, it's such an amazing tool and you have such an amazing gift. Um, So I just want to say thank you so much. And I do have one more oh, question to okay. end on. Oh, sure. Go for it. For everyone, how can, because people hear this and they get spooked and they're scared and like, oh my God, somebody's in my head. And how, what would you recommend for people to, to just maintain that, you know, maybe a kind of a protective bubble or, or a certain state of mind? What would be your suggestion? I will say to meditate. And when I say meditate, meditate with a purpose. Have a mantra, not just the Om or your Lam or Ram, you know, not just those, but find a mantra that truly fits what your desire is. And so if you have a different language or if you have a different belief system or if there's something you found, you know, if you're witchy or you're, you know, just whatever it may be, if there is a word or a phrase that means protection to you, use that mantra and imagine a bubble around you and encase yourself. And, and you know, I'm protected. Find that trigger protection and, and use it. Meditate daily and connect with your higher self. Understand that you already have the power. You already know. You just have to walk in it. You have to walk in who and what you are and who and what you are given. We all have a gift. We just have to remember what it is mm -hmm. and tap into it and use it. Sometimes it's like a sword. Sometimes it's like a shield, but either way it's protection. Thank you. Great. Well, gosh, thank you so much. It's been amazing learning and getting to know you a little bit through this. Um, any uh, any any final words you want to say for people for how to you want to direct them anywhere or uh, any final words? Yeah, absolutely. You please follow if you are not following Farsight Prime, go to farsightprime.com uh, and subscribe. It's only ten dollars a month to subscribe, and you get everything we've ever done and then some, even some funny things. Follow Courtney Brown Farsight on Instagram, and that's Farsight like seeing far. 
Courtney Brown Farsight. You can also find me at Princess Views RV underscore on Instagram. Um, or you can find me on Facebook at Yemi Janae. That's Y E M E J E A N E E. You can also email me at princessviews at gmail.com. So princessviews at gmail.com. Um, follow us, subscribe, and come to this conference and see me in July. I will send Matt all the information so that you can post it with this podcast. Um, I have five tickets that give you discounts. So first come, first serve. Um, <laughs> it'll be nice to meet you guys in person and it's an amazing conference and it's about aliens <laughs> and disclosure. Yeah. Where is it going to be? Florida at Serata beach. Oh, sweet. And so I'll send you guys that information so you can like do with all the techie stuff with it and, um, and come yourself. Come yeah. on. That would, that would be amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, Great. Well, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Thank you, Yemi. And, uh, it was uh, so nice thanks. meeting you. Absolutely. Yemi, he was well. Yemi okay. Janae, right? Got yes, it. that's correct. Beautiful. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank well, you. then so long. Until next time. Peace Bye -bye. and love. Bye-bye.